Hello, my geniuses. Guess what? Today I have with me a man that you will thank me for. This man is very strong. He is dedicated. He is a family man. He is very caring, loyal, and kind. So much so that he is doing humanitarian work in Jamaica, of which he is very successful. My geniuses, it is my pleasure to have this gentleman to share his story with you because he believes in the power of education. So I'm going to go right ahead and ask you to help me to welcome Mr. Kaniel Cole. Good morning, Mr. Cole. How are you? Um, good morning. I'm okay. I'm overwhelmed by that introduction, but you know. It is true. Um, it is it is all true, Mr. Cole. Um, right now, I feel like a little kid in a candy store because ever <laughs> since I have been going on social media, I have been seeing your name everywhere. I saw it in the star because I knew um, you had some column in the star years ago. I don't know if you still do that. Yes, Mr. Cole, <laughs> it is indeed an honor. And yeah. I like the work that you are doing. So tell me, I'm going to jump right into it because I told I was so excited that though I try to keep it a secret as to who I will have on my program, I mentioned it to two of my close geniuses and they were mm -hmm. like, what does Mr. Cole do? Because we see him everywhere. We see his name everywhere. Yeah. So clear that up for them for me, please, Camille. Okay, so I am a reserve soldier in the Jamaica Defense Force, and I am a, a I am an investigator with the Office of the Public Defender. All right, beautiful, ah, uh, lovely. Talk to me about your educational journey. Which basic school did you attend, and what is your first memory of school? My first memory of school would definitely be at Morgan's basic school and I'll be the first memory is of Miss Morgan um, herself and funny enough uh, my mother's maiden name is Morgan so and mine is Morgan oh we are related no wonder you're such a genius no <laughs> wonder and Mr. Cole I must tell you that I was so intrigued by this interview that I didn't do a lot of research because I want to be learning the facts the same time my geniuses are learning about you because you're like a mystery man um, okay well so um the first memory is actually attending Morgan's basic school and um, you know, the teacher there, or I would say, I wouldn't say the principal, but the administrator there was actually Morgan herself. And it was a, you know, small, small school, but it was home away from home because I felt, you know, when mommy, you know, sent me to school, um, I felt I was right at home at Morgan. Oh, and it was that um, one railway lane Spanish town. Okay, That's beautiful. Now that you've mentioned Spanish Town, are you originally from Spanish Town? Talk to me about that and your upbringing. What what kind of child were you? <laughs> I was a rude child. That I, I can get that out the way from from the get go. Um, yes, I am originally from Spanish Town. I born and bred in Spanish Town. I was literally literally, you know birth in Spanish town. Um, my mother um, had me um, on the streets. I believe she was heading to the hospital at the time, but you know, the birth came and I was literally birthed in Spanish town. So um, upbringing, I, I would say mommy and daddy did okay. Um, under the circumstances, we were a poor family. You know, my my mother being a dressmaker and my father being a taxi operator, um, you know, to, 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 and I, I would say they are not traditionally working class, but they, you know, they made um, ends meet. So yes. I had a rough upbringing, but nothing I would say I regret, or I would say I 
didn't like. I believe it shaped me into you know who I am and who I aspire to be. And you're a respectable gentleman. And I am telling you that my geniuses admire you a whole lot. Uh, mm -hmm. In Spanish town, it is reputable for violence. So to see a man of your stature right now, the fact that you are a product of Spanish town, it is even more rewarding. And I applaud you, Mr. Cole. No, yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Talk to me about your primary school. Which primary school did you attend? And give us a little about that journey. All right. I left Morgan's basic school and went to I went to Spanish Town Infant. And Spanish Town Infant is right next door to Spanish Town Primary. So I actually attended Spanish Town Primary, I believe from 1988 to 1993. And um, attending the primary school throughout the 80s, the late 80s, early 90s, and being, you know, my formative years, it definitely molded me. Yes. And, you know, put me on the, the track of what I wanted to become. Um, in life. In the late 80s, early 90s, you know, Spanish zone is predominantly um, is prevalent with, with violence. And as I said, the formative years, it could have shaped me into being, you know, some ill of society. Yes. Or, you know, some byproduct. But I wanted byproduct of the violence. But I wanted more. And I saw how mommy and daddy, you know, tried with us. So I didn't want to come and become a burden of society per se. Oh, I, oh. I wanted to, you know, as you, as you so eloquently um, introduced, I wanted to be somebody that somebody could look up to over a short time. So, you know, yeah. It, I, it definitely was the formative years and definitely um, those years shaped me and it, it opened my eyes as to what I could have been, I could do, and you know what I want, want to do in life. Well said. Now of your parents, your mother and your father, who definitely had the stronger role in making you the person that you are today? Undoubtedly my mother. Yes. You know, um, she passed in 2008 and you, you know, growing up and becoming a young man, you want to, you want to work to show proof and to, you know, to physically, not just to look at your mom and tell her thanks, but to, to, to buy the big house and the big vehicle and say, mommy, you know, choose whichever vehicle you want or you want to live here or there. You know, I wanted to show her that kind of appreciation, but, you know, the father knows best. Yeah. So she, she passed in 2008, so I couldn't physically do the things that hear some artists you know, say them what to do for their mother. So, yeah. You know, take the mother to the ghetto or to buy the big house on the hill or to buy her nice. Even though material things doesn't necessarily equate to, 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 to love. Yeah. But I wanted to physically show her that kind of appreciation that, you know, um, I definitely adore, adore her and love, love her. But yes, definitely my mother. She had the stronger influence on me. Um, both in resemblance and in how I go about doing things. Okay, my condolences. Is your father alive? My father is still alive, still very much alive. He must be looking at you and feeling extremely proud. How does he show that he's proud of you? Does he tell you or is action like he'll brag about you and say, Oh, my son, that's my son, Camille? Um, so, yes. My father shows appreciation by actually being there. Yes. You know, I, I remember when I was going to high school and I would see on report day, you would see um, for some kids, you see their mother or their father um, turning up. And that most of the time, or some of the time, that would be because the father is no longer a part of the relationship, part of the family, yes. or the mother is overseas. But I was fortunate 
during my high school years to have good parents. So either of them could actually come for the report and the, the report. And that was kind of daunting on me because, you know, when uh, my friend in high school could say, you know, my mother's coming for it or my mother's working, so my auntie's coming for it and my auntie won't do anything or stuff like that. I was kind of, you know, uh, more reserved because I had mommy and daddy still in the household. Yeah. So my father is very much alive and we have a good cordial relationship. Um, but I must say he shows his appreciation by actually being um, being around, being there for me. So, like for instance, yesterday I serviced my vehicle. My father was the one who actually, you know, was up and about doing that. That is so beautiful, Camille. Yeah. Uh, who are some of the teachers that played an influential role in your schooling at Spanish Town Primary? And what kind of student were you there? Were you like an A student, an average student? What were you like there? What were your passes like? And which school did you matriculate into? Which high school? All right. So um, I love the fact that you mentioned Spanish show in primary because um, the two teachers that I've, I've had the most impact on me was our two teachers by the name of Mrs. Brissett and Mrs. Blackwood, yeah. I believe, yeah. Um, during primary school, I was a fairly decent student, decent in both uh, mannerism and, uh, um, you know, attending school, attendance, mannerism, and actually doing my work. I would say I was on the cusp of being a A minus, B plus kind of student. Yeah. Yeah. I was very rude. And I think some of my mannerism, you know, can be seen or can be read in my post that I said, I said this when I was leaving high school that I, it doesn't matter where I go in life or how, I, or how low I go, you know, whether I work with kings or governors or who's whomever, I've never changed. But not because I don't want to change, you know what, this is me going around at that, that beautifully sums up my life that, um, you know, I'm going to run joke till, till me dead. Because yeah. that, that is all, you know, that is all I am. So even though I am in the presence of greatness or great persons or so on and so forth, you know, I believe I can walk with king, kings and queens and, and, and don't lose a common touch. So those teachers definitely played a part. They, they molded me when, you know, all around was falling apart yeah. because again growing up in Spanish town you could be easily influenced yes easily influenced so Mrs. Blackman sorry Mrs. Blackwood and Mrs. Brissett yes it has been years I, I don't see them still but you know being from primary school and I left primary school in 1993 so it has been quite some time I don't see or hear from them but definitely um you know it, it doesn't matter where I go in the world those two names, you know, definitely stick, stick out. Okay, so which school, which high school did you attend? And what was I, it like for you in high school? I attended St. Catherine High School. Same school um, as the Prime Minister, right? <laughs> yeah, and that is, you know, some bragging rights now. <laughs> Brag all you, you know, want, you're humble. Because it was a time when I believe, um, the Honorable P.J. Patterson was Prime Minister. He always, you know, spoke so highly of his um, alma mater. So being um, the Prime Minister now is um, a past student of St. Catherine High School. Yeah. yeah, it gives me some, it gives me some talking point. Yes. So, so I, I got passes for St. Catherine High School in 1993 and Going to high school, I don't know how other persons felt about leaving um, primary school or lower school to high school, but for me, it was definitely a game changer yeah. because it, it felt like I was actually somebody or I was becoming somebody. You know, I was, I was leaving Spanish zone primary to a respectable high school in St. Catherine, and because, you know, back then when common entrance was a thing and you didn't, 
you didn't do so well in, in, in the exams, you would go to like a comprehensive high school and comprehensive high school and technical high schools weren't seen as, you know? Yes, the top school. Mm -hmm. Right. So when I passed a St. Catherine High School and you heard it was a Catholic school and decent persons go to that school and it is, you know, I definitely felt like I was becoming somebody. So, yes. Yeah. Were you involved in extracurricular activities there? Um, you used to run or be a part, a part of the festival team or anything? So I was a avid footballer. I, I love sports. So I played uh, also a multiplicity of sports, you know, cricket. Yes. Football. I did some basketball. But again, during the years that I was at, during the latter years that I was at Spanish Stone Primary, I was, you know, the formative years I got to know things I got to, because where I was from, from Spanish Stone, I didn't play a lot of football. You know, mommy and daddy had to work, so I had to stay over the aunt, the aunt or the uncle. Okay. So I didn't get a chance to go out and play and, you know, be myself. But definitely when I went to, started going to St. Catherine High School and because they were different backgrounds, Persons coming from Portmore, persons coming from Perth in Spanish Town, persons coming from Clarendon, and everybody, you know, had different mindset and different cultures. I saw how persons play sports and what sports can do for persons. Definitely. You know, all them express themselves. You know, I got beaten by the, the football box, so I was more of a football than anything else. But I played a number of sports. Were you ever tempted to choose the fast lane instead of going through it the right way in terms of getting your education, getting a respectable job? For many young people, I know that it seems as if it's so glamorous out there. Was there ever a time that you were tempted? Um, if this is a term, I would use it. I'm superficially tempted. Yes. And I say that because... Um, Growing up in Spanish town in a garrison in a ghetto, you, you see things and you hear things and you can easily become influenced. Yes. Um, there, was, there was a sound system, I can't remember the name of the sound system now. Um, but there was this DJ by the name of Amamot. He used to DJ on the sound system. So, you know, every, it's almost like every other night or every Tuesday, there was the sound would stream up and play. And you you think that, you know, maybe. I should do music. Yeah. Because you hear it in the, you hear it in the background ever so often, even when you're studying, you hear it. And you hear the men, the DJs and the mic, you know, talking. And I'm saying, I can do that. I can say that. But yeah, man, definitely. Um, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't say I was tempted, but I thought about it. Okay. Thought about um, what a life of crime would be like. Because, you know, people say crime don't pay. Yeah, I don't, necessarily, I don't necessarily buy that, but yeah. you know, crime pays, but who, 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 who it pays? But yeah, man, I thought about it, but um, I told I, I think I told my mother this um, many, many, many years ago that I don't think I could live with myself running and looking over my shoulder, yeah, every day, you know, yeah, you know? so and I was. I was so happy that I got the opportunity to join the JD. I always link those two stories that if it wasn't for the JDF, I mean, who knows? As I joined the system, I joined the JDF in 2001. And leading up to leading up to 2001, I had a big afro that I was planning to twist and you know, corner and board here. Yeah, man, I was I was influenced by society. So I I yeah. to go upstairs and do the corner rolls and live the life that I was seeing. You know, when I go on to the, the basketball court or the football ground, you see everybody, the football ground was like a melting pot of different ideas and cultures and all persons express themselves. So you'd see the galleys, yes. warriors, panneros, and mesh marine and stuff like that. So it definitely influenced you, even though you, you, you might not necessarily want to be influenced, Yes. You see what you see what the young girls at the time gravitated to, right? So yeah, man, it definitely influenced me. But um, again, with Mrs. Brissett and Mrs. Blackwood, 
Yes. And my mother and my father work in day and night. Um, it showed me that, you know, I wanted more. Okay. Um, I like this Kanil call coming up because this is a Kanil call that I read about and I've visualized so many times. Mm -hmm. So many times I've been here, Kanil, and I am so down, you know, and I would jump on social media and there is a comment from you and I start laughing. You know, and I, I know that you're doing that for many people in this world. And I want to encourage you to continue to do so because I guess you're just saving many lives by your commentary. So talk to me about that. What started it first? How did you venture into just being such a jovial person and always having something to say to actually excite people and to get them to laugh? To be honest, <laughs> the, the very way you introduced that just now yes. is exactly what I thought about. Because there were there were a lot of, even though there are a lot of persons who, who are going through rough times, tough times, and are going through exactly what you are writing and what you are thinking about. And when they see somebody else writing it or expressing it, you know, maybe they're saying to themselves that, you know, okay, so there's another way or there's another way or there's somebody I can talk to. So yes. That was the that was the genesis of that. That was the idea that was behind everything else. So yes, I talk a lot. And yes, I'm annoying to some persons, but there are some persons out there who are waiting to see what you know I have to say or you have to say or so on and so forth. It's it's almost akin to um some of our local artists. Yes. A lot of university students are in, you are in university, are in the dorm rooms listening to some of the crap that the artists are putting out because it resonated with where they're coming from or it resonated with what is going on in their lives. Some of the very, some of, some of our next leaders and, and future leaders, um, both in the banking sector, both in, both in the agriculture sector, in the, in the churches, you name it. A lot of them are listening to our artists now, yes. and they are the ones influencing them. And the reason why they are listening to them is because they are gravitating to some aspect of what they are saying. So that was the reason behind it. I like that you mentioned artists because guess what? I must confess that when I was going to UA, so when I was in Jamaica and I was going to UA, I would listen to Vibes Cartel most nights and it's taboo for you to be listening to Vibes Cartel and talking about it out loud as a teacher in Jamaica. But I listened to him nonstop, especially coming from you at night. He would keep my company because somehow he's a genius when it comes on to lyrics. So either way, his writing style is good. And as such, I was drawn to it. And the vibes kept me coming from school like two o'clock in the mornings after I've had study groups and so on. So you're so right about it. And that is exactly how we see you. You provide sunshine in our rain. Another thing that you do, because you're such a humanitarian, that news at seven, Kanil, you are doing justice to the entire world. I am here. And because of you, Kanil, I'm telling you, you are doing wonders. Because of you, I can listen and watch the news every night. When it's election time, I am glued and it's because of you. Whatever is happening in Jamaica, it is because of you. And you know where your respect comes in abundance right now? The fact that in spite of your two main jobs, you are such a humanitarian that apart from giving back by allowing us to watch the news, you have now ventured further. Talk to my geniuses about that. Okay, the charity work came about because of COVID. Yes. So when COVID, when the virus was first evident in Jamaica, you know, uh, and the country started to close down, when the government started to lock down the country, I saw the hysteria 
you know, you're watching the news, you see the hysteria that is created when everybody is lined up at a particular shop and they only have two hours to shop. Yeah. And you, you say to yourself, um, if this is actually real, because you, you see these things on television, you see in the movies, you read about it, but actually seeing the hysteria that is going on, I said, no, um, I can feel, I can give somebody some food that they, you know, when you see people on the television saying that we don't have no food and we need, we need to go and shop and, you know, it break my heart. Yes. It go my heart. And that's how person is lining up at, at places like uh, the money transfers, the money ground and the Western Union, just for enough money to buy food for a day or two. I didn't know that persons in Jamaica was so desperate. I know that, you know, we have poverty in Jamaica and there's a yeah. poverty line and so on and so forth. But I didn't know that persons were so desperate that they were actually living from hand to mouth. Yes. Um, I know persons are living from paycheck to paycheck, but those persons were living from what somebody gave them today. Yes. To buy food the same day. So I thought about it. At the time, I thought about like, that I was going to use one of my salary to buy groceries and feed persons, feed some persons. But I thought it might, I thought about the negatives of it more than the positive because person might think I was gloating or person might think I was, you know, showing off and stuff like that. So I said to him, and I didn't want a person to bombard my house yes. or, or to seek me out and stuff like that. So I said, no, let me wait and see what is taking place. But as COVID dragged on and the places, um, the restriction become tighter and somewhat loosened, I saw that um, our normal, we won't get back to normalcy just yet. Yes. So I decided that, um, you know, I'm going to do it. All right. So I'm saying if one person can feed one person or five mm -hmm. persons, then just imagine those who can help, you know, extend the, the, the end of gratitude. So um, that was how I looked at it, that if I can feed five persons, then somebody else is working. Because there's, there are a lot of persons who are comfortable. You know, it's not for me to point on somebody and say, you are worth X amount of money, you can help. No. Yes. I'm doing, I think I'm doing my part so persons can be inspired to do and, you know, each one help one. And we can, I think we can, we can help in general. Yeah. Okay. Well, kudos on what you're doing kudos on that. That is indeed powerful. And I realize that apart from helping with food, you have also ventured into helping with medical bills. And that is indeed commendable as well. No, Kaneel, I always see you talking about your kids. In fact, I know when your last baby was born, if I should question them about what type of daddy you are, what would they tell me? That you're loving and kind or you're strict and mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> you see, online, mm -hmm. I try to, I try to have, I think persons say I have um, multiple personalities. I don't shy away from that because when I'm online, I am a particular person, it's like a, I put on a persona, but yeah. when I'm old, I believe I am daddy, I am strict because I want my kids to grow up knowing that you're not going to get a handout from society, you're going to work hard for what you, for what you want. So when I'm home, I can tell I'm very strict. So they will tell you that much about me, but I believe they, you know, after everything else, they will tell you how much I am um, loving that I believe. Yes. Because I try, I try what I wanted to do in life. And what I wanted to do in life is what I would say my mother and my father didn't do. You know, God bless her soul. She, my mother did, you know, yes. her best. My father did his, his best at the time. 
with the limited knowledge, with limited ed education, I am, you know, this far along in life. And it, 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 it's all because of them. But it would be remiss of me to limit my kids yes. to the level that I am at. So I want them to, to Sir, prime example, Sir. prime example, at the time, my son is nine. When I was nine, I didn't have a tablet. I didn't have certain things that he is exposed to and he has, he have. So I want, by the time he reach, let's say 20, or let's see, by the time he reach high school, he's supposed to can just choose what he wants in, instead of thinking about asking me, instead of saving for this, saving. So I am working hard for his choices in life to be much, much easier. Okay. So right now, I don't have, I would say, I don't have the time for him to sleep up. So, you know, I want them to go to university. I want them to, to choose whether or not they want to become a doctor, lawyer, chief, in and whatever. That opportunity wasn't necessarily afforded to me. And I use the word necessarily because, yes, I could have become a doctor if I wanted, but the road was far, far harder. Yes. My son and for other persons, for instance, with 14-year-old Raymond Campbell, I thought of it in the sense that it could have been me. It could have been 14-year-old Canil Cole with scoliosis. Yes. I, I, at, with scoliosis, I don't think I could have joined the, the army. Yeah. I don't think I would have had the luxury of sitting here talking about my job. You understand? The first thing persons, people in society would do would judge you by your scoliosis, would judge you by your, your handicap. So seeing the story, I said, 14 year old Raymond deserve, deserve a good chance at life. So seeing as how I have a platform yes. with some followers, why not engage my followers and my friends on Facebook to see if we can assist 14 year old Raymond Campbell. Because right. at 14, you know, going up to 20, when he enters the working world, the first thing persons are going to do, the young man, the scoliosis. You sound Emerson? like a saint, Keneal. You sound like a saint. Yeah. Congratulations on the work that you are doing. Keneal, please give me four words to describe you. Four words. I think I am hardworking. I think I'm a disciplinarian in the sense that I exude discipline and I myself is disciplined. In the sense that I get up at a particular time, uh, most, I do the same things most morning because I want to reach at work. Because again, it starts with work. If I yeah. don't have a solid foundation, a solid work system, then everything else is in vain. So I am hard working, I uh, discipline, uh, um, Commitment is another word I could use to describe me because I believe that if I commit to a task, I, however hard it is, I want to see it through. So I'm committed. And I'm not committed for everything, but for the most things I am committed. Yeah. I'm committed to helping persons right now because I believe that in spite of what is taking place, it's not for us to say, okay, we have a good job. You know, yeah. whatever, whatever. It is for it is for us who are safe in our jobs to help persons who are who have lost their jobs because of COVID. You know, you see, you see persons begging who wouldn't normally be begging. There are persons who don't want to beg because they had a, a decent job, and because of COVID, you know, the, the health sector. No, sorry, not the health sector, the tourism sector is impacted and there are a lot of persons out of job. So I believe it's the persons who are somewhat safe. So, you know, Linda. And so hard working, committed, dedicated. So again, just like with committed, I'm dedicated to, to the task at hand um, when the time arrives. When the time arrives. So, yeah. Okay. Tell me about a tragedy that has happened in your life. Like, was it the loss of your mother? What is the greatest yeah. tragedy? Definitely the, the, the loss of my mom. Um, so 
again, it, 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 it definitely the, the loss of my mom, and it was life changing in the sense that you get to, you're trusted in the spotlight, and everyone expected you to be the person. Because when I lost my mother in, in 2008, at the time, the funeral, at the time of the funeral, I didn't know anything about speaking about my mother's life. Yeah. It came at such a shock that the simplest of things became the artists of Taz. When my mom passed and we were looking about the, her burial and persons were saying that we could go to NIS and we could do this and could do this, I was still in shock. I was still in shock. I am. I was to say that, okay, cool, Kanye is her son, Kanye must do this and Kanye is the one who, I mean, we were all working. Yeah. My sisters and brothers were working. But I was thinking that, I'm thinking that maybe because I was the one who had a decent enough job, persons were saying that, can you, can you, can you? All this time I was grieving. So, you know, it is definitely the greatest learning experience in my life and the greatest tragedy. Okay. What has been your greatest success? My children. Alice, again, life changing. The birth of my son, the birth of my daughter, definitely yeah. life changing. It gave me a new purpose in life. You know, you, you often hear people say, um, their, your children are there, they're, they're art in human form, they love in human form, and stuff like that. Definitely. How when do you I get up, Go ahead, sorry, when, yeah. when I get up um, each and every morning, I think the purpose for me getting up is actually to see them succeed in life to see them become one step better. Yes. Go one step further than I actually um, did. But definitely, they are my greatest accomplishment. Beautiful. Now, Keneal, you, you have two jobs, two main jobs, plus you are highly involved with your charity work. How do you find time for people out there struggling to create a balance? Talk to us about how you do that. Really and truly, um, there isn't much to say because I really and truly don't find time. Yeah. Um, in the sense that, in the sense that I come to work from eight to four, and during those working hours that I should be working, I steal some time by the side to call a friend or to call two friends to ask them, hey, donate please, donate please. Yes. And you know, I understand and during the lunchtime I will be on the road to collect donations, whether Western Union MoneyGram are actually calling somebody and they're meeting me at my office or I'm actually driving further downtown. I really actually don't, I like, to, I like to say I don't find time. Yes. One thing impacts the other. Yeah. So, my work in the JDF impacts me here and my work here impacts everything else. So sometimes when I have a lull time, which is very rare, I call someone, or if I'm taking a break, I call someone or, or take someone and say, look, I'm making a donation or I'm making some clothes, some second hand clothes or stuff like that. So I really actually don't have the time. And maybe, maybe that is the reason why I'm so strict at home. Yes. So when I'm home and I'm helping with school work I help with the kids, you know, to get them ready for school. I'm always, you know, hurry, I'm always hurry, hurry up because teachers will be online at, you know, 8.30 and so on and so forth. I like your value towards education. My genius is, you see why I had to get Kanil on here just for you to motivate, inspire, educate, and entertain you. Now, Kanil, mm -hmm. after working so hard, what gives you comfort how do you find joy and what do you do for fun i read i read read and read um so prior to covid prior to covid i would 
go to the movies at times. I would go to the park to, you know, look at life past, to look at life on cold, to see persons who think they are not fit. Yes. Try to get fit, persons who are fit, maintain their fitness and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, I would say most of my time, my spare time is spent reading. And this comes back to me blogging or commenting. Because sometimes you see a particular topic on a, a, on a, a magazine website and readily something that you read, you know, comes back to you. So some person would love to say that, like you say, I was described as a love guru or, you know, because I was talking on a particular topic. But yes. I'm not a love guru. It's something that I read and it came back to me. You know, just like with these artists, it's because they read wide. Yeah. So I watch, I watch a lot of TV, I watch a lot of movie, movies. I entertain myself and I educate myself at the same time. Yes. And that's particularly the reason why, when you mentioned vibes pattern earlier, I could very easily say yes. Yes. Because due to his delivery and his topic and his subject matter. Yes. I read wide. And not just stick to the, the, the same old topic over and over. Or if he is it is a particular topic that is on the way he delivers it and his diversity and his intonation. Yes. And the man, you know, does a lot of reading. Yes, he's well read for real. Definitely so. But in addition to leisure time, I play football, I go to the beach, I stay home and watch TV, read. I love to travel. I, um, it's not something I've done so often or regularly, again, due to COVID and everything, but I love to travel. Again, seeing all pros, persons, people get by from one place to the next in such a hurry. Yes. It, it kind of, you know, get your brain clicking. Uh, Let's say some men approach you in Spanish town, all right? Mm -hmm. And they are saying to you, well, school age, gentlemen, and they are saying to you, Kanil, I want to stop going to school because I see people out there making more of a living than those in school that actually got educated. What would be your encouragement and advice to them? I would encourage them to still go to school, you know, get a formal education because, um, the fad and the fashion at the time of the time will fade, but you know, good education will never ever decay. Yes. There are a myriad, myriad of examples to use of persons who would have. And if, so let's say somebody drop, drop out of school and they make it in life. Of course, you can make it in life. This third richest man in the world, Martin Zuckerberg, didn't complete um, university. Yeah. Bill Gates, I believe, was a university dropout. There yeah. are holy for reasons, holy for examples. But how many persons are going to be a Bill Gates or a Martin Zuckerberg or a Kanye West or you understand? You name it. Yes. It's akin to the football system in Jamaica, the Jam Jamaica Football Federation. A lot of youths can play football. But the team will only select 11 to represent them at a time. So what do you think happened to the, the multitude of other talents? You understand? So you need something to, to back up or to substantiate your talent. Again, like persons who have a degree, having a degree alone, um, won't cut it in line. Yes. I love to tell persons, that I don't have a degree. A lot of persons believe I, I, I completed university. I'm actually in third year of a university, you know, to complete my degree. And the reason why I'm, I um, want to do it is to inspire persons that in spite of everything, yes, I started life with two subjects, English and art and craft. 
because I love, I love the languages. I love to hear how persons express themselves. And I love the arts. I guess it's one and the same. Yeah. You understand? So I started life with two subjects. And it's for me to say that, you know, I'm showing person, I'm manifesting that, you know, you can make the life even if you don't get the opportunity to go to university. But I don't want it to be said that I need never go to university and look up Canadian turn on. No. Yes. Go to school because at the end of the day, again, person will judge you by what you have on paper. People will say, okay, she will get the edge because she has a degree. Yes. And maybe she can't read. Yes. You understand? So you need to substantiate your life. I mean, this is not for everyone. Yeah. But you would have to work with the talents that you are given. And persons are not necessarily, you're not judging persons on, on the, the use of talent. Nowadays, persons are judging persons on whether or not you have a degree or you don't have a degree. Okay, my genius so, is perfect. I'm trying, sorry to cut, I'm just trying no, to that's inspire fine. persons. I'm trying to inspire persons to stay in school, to get a formal education, just in case your talent doesn't take you where you want to. Because you reach for the stars and don't, you know, you can fall in the crowd. My genius is you heard, Keneal, he's encouraging you to stay in school, get an education, he believes in the power of education and it is because of education, he is looking so astute in that suit and sitting there in his job. Now, Keneal, most times I read your comments on the, the pastor in Tell Me Pastor and you give better advice. Have you ever thought about venturing in that? So have your advice column. I know you had um, a column in the star, but an advice and dating column, because I could consider you a love guru as well. <laughs> what is next right. for you? All right. So yes, I had a column in the star and because of work, yes. it conflicts with my work at times being, I should be serious. Yeah. About army life um, my present job so I find that it it encroaches so I don't want people to believe that every time they come to my desk or my office it is a joke yeah and trust me it affects me even when I'm being serious even when I'm on social media and trying to be serious yeah. let's say in the, any particular topic um, pops up and I just write something persons will laugh under the, the, the comment and persons who don't know me will come on and say, he is so silly or he is so insensitive. Yeah. And being truly, I am just expressing what I believe. I'm not trying to make a joke of it or anything, but it is what it is. It's, it's like a person saying, you can't be a judge and be a comedian. You know, you can't be a doctor and be a comedian. You can actually, but in society, yeah. they will blame you to be or insensitive or you're not whatever, whatever. So, but I've thought about it and uh, but what I've been putting most of my energy and thought into right now is actually doing a vlog. I am putting in the work right now to actually renovate one of my rooms to be in a studio. And then I, be, I will be able to, you know, consciously manifest my ideas and my thoughts so people can actually, you know, I've been told that I should um, use of YouTube more and so on and so forth. Yes, but it's in, a, it's in the, the plans are in the pipeline. Come go. They need to tune into reading and learning. Kadian, definitely. I believe persons who aren't going to school or who aren't interested in school should read. Definitely. Reading is actually schooling, you know. Once you read and can understand what you go to school is to basically test what you read and what you've learned. So some persons say, I don't read this particular book or I don't read that particular book. I mean, it is knowledge. It is in a book for a particular reason. So I believe that, I mean, you have persons who say that school is not for everybody. I don't believe that. Yeah. Like saying reading is not for everybody, but you want to get paid, you want money, you want to have this and the, the, the finer things in life. It starts with reading. Once you can read and comprehend, your life's road will be much smoother. 
Okay. You can't, read a, you can't read and write. You will have a lot of challenges in life. What are your final thoughts? That person should tune into KDN oh. YouTube channel. How do you want to be remembered, Camille? <laughs> you are so. What I want to say, my final thoughts would be what I've just said. Yes. You should read wide so they, they don't limit themselves in a particular era or field so they can be able to stand again with kings and queens and those who come and touch. You can reason with persons who are far more intellectual or are thought of to be far more intellectual than you. And you can reason with the common man. Yeah. How do you want to be remembered 50 years from now? A hundred years from now? I want to be remembered for definitely my generosity. Mm -hmm. But it is not for me to say because I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to impact lives that when my kids and my children's children come up, and let's say they are in a particular situation, they can get the assistance from somebody who, who just want to be generous and not thinking that, you know, the great, great grandfather was this side that. I want people, if I could say, I want to be remembered for, you know, thinking of the less fortunate and doing all that I can do. Okay, guys. You heard it from the man, Kaneel Cole himself. It was a pleasure having him. Like me and many of my geniuses, you wanted to know more about him. One thing that you're certain of is that he believes in the power of education and he's going places and building Jamaica, not just for himself, but for you. So if you can make sure that you jump on board with this charity work, like I will be doing soon. Now, have you been looking in that mirror? Have you been telling yourself great things? You're awesome, you're brilliant, you're special, you're beautiful, you're talented. Have you been kind to yourself? I hope so, but in so doing, be kind to others. And if you have nothing good to say about people, please, Say absolutely nothing at all. Have yourselves a great day. Bye.